Cecilia Kong of the Washington Post, what is the Google Book Settlement? The Google Book Settlement is part of a years-long legal um, battle between Google and publishers and authors over really the way that we will access books and how we will search for books online. The way that we are going to do that is really going to change. The web has changed everything. The, um, going to your local library, going to your local university library and getting a book off the shelf is going to be forever altered in many ways by the web. Um, you'll still be able to do that, but the web provides the opportunity in some ways, the internet does, for someone in Kansas to get a hold of a really arcane, narrow book that resides someplace in England um, within seconds over the web. And the idea that Google had in the first place was to make every single book in the world universally ac accessible. And they wanted to do that by scanning every book that exists in the, in the world. I mean, it was a very ambitious project. They really wanted to create the world's biggest online um, library. And what I mean by library is online. You don't have to actually go someplace and be, and it doesn't reside anywhere. It would reside on the web. Um, so it was a very ambitious project. And they started scanning books, and then they realized that they ran up into a bunch of legal issues, copyright and antitrust. What was Google's original motive? The original motive is, is really along the lines of their whole mission, which is for users of the internet to access any information they want, video, books, um, music now, now music, maps, um, anything that, any information that travels over the web. And, and the project was nothing but very, very ambitious. It was, again, to, to create, to scan every single book in the world. And I think some people estimate there may be 60 million books or so um, all of, in, in the world that, that residing in different libraries. And I think that's around the number that the Library of Congress has. Was there a profit motive? Oh, certainly. And that's where it gets interesting. This is a very interesting case in that it intersects consumer use, it intersects legal concerns and um, regulatory issues, and it intersects commerce. And there's certainly a commercial aspect of it. On the one hand, on the most basic level, Google and many companies on the web benefit from more people being on the internet and accessing more information. The more you go onto the internet and you look for um, where can I get a copy of Catcher in the Rye or where can I get a copy of Jane Austen's Emma, um, if you make those searches and you do it through, you know, particularly if you do it through the Google search um, engine, that's good for Google, that's good for internet commerce, it's good for whoever's going to sell that book like Amazon and Microsoft or, or Yahoo or whoever that might be or the next big web company that's going to sell a book. So there's certainly a, 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 a commercial interest involved and Google benefits from both the search part of it and it will benefit also from the distribution of these books. They haven't started yet, but they want to print these books. They're going to scan them first, then they want to print these books, and then they want to sell them to you if you want it to. And that's when a lot of the commercial interests came in, and they voiced in and said, hey, stop. There's, we've got some major concerns over this settlement that you've struck with authors and publishers because you, Google, are going to have first dibs and much more control than we think is fair. And so that's the commercial aspect of it. And that, again, intersects with some of the regulatory reviews taking place right now in Washington at the Department of Justice and at the U.S. Copyright Office. Um, and they're asking some really hard questions about how does this new web model um, fit into some of our regulatory prisms and understanding how do, does this new web strategy by Google to both make information accessible and to distribute, how does that create competition concerns? Um, and how do you balance that with what is, was really a very legitimate um, public interest, which is to make information accessible, either for free or for cheap? And you know that's a public good. So it's a really interesting, difficult question in many ways that Washington regulators are facing. And we will talk about that. First, though, when did Google start this project? Sure. When did the lawsuits start? Right. How many of these 60 million books have been scanned? OK, great. Well, let's start from the beginning. Google would say that it sta started from the very beginning, um, from when Google was founded in 1996. And the uh, Google's founders, Sergey Brin and Larry pra Page, had you know, tossed around the idea of, you know, why don't we start digitizing books? And, um, 
and library collections and how would that process go about and it was integral to their formation of their search engine and the technology behind their search engine using spiders to crawl the web and to prioritize search links and results. Um, the one it really started in earnest I would say is about 2002 when Google started uh, talking to university libraries like the University of Michigan and other um, big, big library associations um, about starting to scan books and they began in about 2002. Who, who, who did this? Google the did. They started the scanning. Google started scanning. And so what they would do is... In Mountain View, out in California? In Mountain View, exactly, okay. with their technology. And what they did was they would... Um, and they partnered up with a lot of libraries because it was much, took much longer for the libraries to try to scan on their own. And Google was able to say, hey, what might take you an estimate of a thousand years to scan your entire, entire library will take us six. So let us do it for you. Let's put it on the web. The, the benefits are enormous for the public, so for people to access this. So they started scanning. And they started scanning both copyrighted works that were out of print, and that's actually the big subject of debate right now. And they started sub, um, copy, uh, scanning uh, public domain books. Those are books that are not protected under copyright, so that means that they were printed before 1923. And then, which is completely legitimate and fine to do, and then they also started um, scanning uh, books that they partnered up with or they had agreements to to scan directly with publishers and authors. Um, so they were just doing this on their own. And then what happened was some of these private interests, the the authors and publishers groups said, you know. The American Association of Publishers, exactly, the Authors Guild. Exactly. The two big titans of the publishing world and the authors world said, wait, what are you doing? You can't be doing this. You didn't ask permission, first of all, and you're violating copyright laws. So that's, that was the first big obstacle that they faced. And what happened is they got together along with a lot of other groups and they filed their first class action lawsuits against, against Google. Um, so for a series, for a period of about three years, Google and these parties fought out um, what should the rules be on copyright and digitizing these books and create, in other words, making these books accessible online really interesting vexing questions arose over copyright laws, what is uh, fair use on the web, um, how to deal particularly with books that are out of print and where, where uh, books where we don't know where the authors are, who they are even. Um, those books are called orphan works. They're the books of their titles where um, either the owner of the rights of that book have, has not been found or has come forward or is just simply unknown. Um, and there are big questions on how do you, you know, what is fair use of those kinds of, um, of those titles and to put those online. Um, the U.S. Copyright Office said that what Google was doing was a flat-out violation of copy law, copyright law. And a lot of critics, many critics, both library associations, um, other authors groups and publishers said, indeed, you know, Google, you've got to stop. You, what you're doing is you're, you're accessing our works, you're scanning them, and then you're putting up a good 20% of that book online in your search, your search um, program called Google Book Search. And by doing that, you are essentially... Um, without our permission and without us benefiting using our works. And so that's when the class action lawsuits arose. Um, what happened after that, that was 2005, is they came up with a settlement in 2008. In 2000, and all of this, mind you, was really kind of quiet. People weren't really paying that much, that much attention, at least the mainstream wasn't paying that much attention, because it seemed sort of like a, a side project to what Google was doing. Um, Google's main business is search, and it was going into all kinds of other interesting areas like mobile technology, and their, their project on books seemed kind of small. Um, but what we've realized in the course of all of this is that the, it intersects so many different um, parts of society. Consumer use of, of, of books, the commercial aspects, as you mentioned, Peter, and um, regulatory issues that deal with competition and copyright. So when they came up with their settlement in 2008, the um, other groups piped in, um, notably some other library groups and competitors like Microsoft, Amazon, and they said, hey, this is definitely not fair. This, is vi this, this settlement violates copyright laws, and the way that it's written could edge out the potential of any other internet commerce companies like Amazon, like Microsoft, like Yahoo, um, like whoever may be the next big um, e-book reader um, developer.